So interest is an exponential growth model, but we have to do things a little bit different. So let remind me, go back, rewind to the beginning of this chapter. What does the growth model look like? If you were to write an equation for something, a growth model, there's an A in it. Think, 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 times one plus, oh my goodness. Y'all, this was on your sheet from Friday. One plus R to the T. That was not on the sheet. We didn't do that Friday? Okay, 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 okay. We, well, we've graphed. I guess I'm thinking that we graphed growth and decay. Okay, that's all right, that's all right. All right, so this is what we call a growth model. So when something grows exponentially or increases a certain percentage each year, we use this model to represent how much we'll have after t number of years, okay, or, or whatever unit that our time is in. A is our initial amount. What does initial mean? What you start with, that's right. R is our growth rate as a decimal. So if I wanted to say that it grew 22% each year, what would my R be? 0.22, right? This is if you have a percent, you move the decimal two times to the left to find that percent. And T is generally in years, but if the, if the problem specifies another unit, you could use another, like if it says that it increases every uh, month, then your T would be in months. So just depending, most time we're in years. So I guess we need to do an example of a growth since I didn't realize we hadn't done that yet. I'll give you all a second to catch up. Let's say that the population in a small town much like Camden was, um, Jerome, I ain't playing with you today, was 528 in the year 1930. Let's say that the population grows at an annual rate of 2.7% per year. How many people would you expect there to be in the year 2019? Now, today. So this is not a real, like, these are not real numbers. I made these up off the top of my head. So if this comes out wonky, that's why. But just as an example, we start with how much the initial population was, which was what? 528. One plus, what's the rate? So it's got to be as a decimal, so what would it be? 0 0.027. And what are my years? How many years would that be? Why? You're going from 1930 to 2019, which would be 89 years. So when you put this on your calculator, be very careful, especially about your parentheses. 528, 1 plus 0.027 raised to the, what do we say, 89? Not as much growth as what I thought it was going to be. 5,654 people. What did I say? No, I forgot. 56.54. Okay. So it took 89 years to go from around 500 to around 5,600. No. All right, so that's our basic growth, right? Hmm? No. We're going to talk about interest. I showed you that to show you how interest is different. All right. This is basic, very, very basic um, growth. When we get into money, we start getting into compounded interest, right? Because 56.54. This is really what today's lesson is on, guys. 
because interest is exponential growth. But here's the deal. When you, when you make interest or when you get interest, you get interest on interest, right? Like if you take $500 to the bank and then you make $10 in interest, the next time they calculate interest, they calculate it on the $510. So you make interest on interest, right? And depending on how many times they calculate this interest and how they've done, <coughs> is what we call compounded interest. So there is a special formula for compounded interest. And it is the same A, 1 plus R over N. And I think your book might use a K, I'm not sure. To the NT. Now here's what they, this means. Everything looks the same except for one variable. What is that one variable? The N. Right? A is still the same. That's how much you start with. R is still your rate. T is still your time. The N tells me the number of times, number of times, do y'all remember this from Algebra 2? Yeah, I never learned Yeah. Oh, I hated that project. All right, N is going to be the number of times that we compound per year. So if I said that we compounded the interest quarterly, how many times per year would that be? Four. What if I told you that I compounded monthly? Twelve. What if I told you that I compounded daily? <laughs> he did days per month. Yeah. 365. How about weekly? There you go. I'm trying to think of anything else that might come up. Okay, but we're looking at how many times per month that interest is compounded and builds up. Okay, and that's going to impact. And, it, and as we get, as N gets bigger and bigger, it gets closer to a certain number. We're going to talk about that in just a second. All right, let's do an example because these are plug and chug problems. I'll give you just a So it's Christmas time, and you get money for Christmas, let's say. How much money do you think you get for Christmas? <laughs> $500. Okay, I would never get that much, but um, let's just say, because it's a nice, easy number to work with. Let's say you get $500 for Christmas because grandparents are feeling generous since you're fixing to graduate high school and whatnot. And so you take your $500 and you run down the bank to the bank because you're not going to spend it. You're a smart teenager who's going to save your money, right? And you're going to put it in the bank. And at the bank, you get to the bank and they say, okay, we'll pay you 2.7% interest. Huh? Is that the same I did last time? Okay, don't do that. Give me another interest rate. Well, that's high. Okay. We'll do 3.5. Because Cameron's got the best bank in the world and they pay her 3.5% interest. Um... And they tell you that they're going to compound it, we'll say monthly. And so you want to let that money sit there until you're at least out of college. So let's say, um, we'll count a year of high school, even though you only got half a year left, most of you. Four years of college will be five years. Y'all going to go to grad school because y'all smart, so at least another year. So after six years, how much money do you have left in your account? Yes, you are, Jackson. How much? How much do you have left after six years? Hmm, let's figure it out. So start with, that's right, so 500. There you go, Point zero three five. Oh, over, that's right. No, it's not over six. Why is it not over six? What, what does it go over? Twelve. Why twelve? How many times per year is it compounded? So that would be twelve. What's my exponent here? Times. Twelve times six. N times T. 
Again, be careful as you put this in your calculator, especially that you've got multiple things in your exponent here. 500 times. Watch how I put this in. This is where everybody messes up. You can plug it in the equation, but when you go to evaluate, you mess up. 1 plus... Well, 1 plus... Do another parenthesis for your fraction. So, point... Come on. Point oh three five divided by 12. Close the fraction and close that little 1 plus R. Raise it to the power. Now you need another parenthesis because you're multiplying in the exponent. 12 times 6. Close the parenthesis. $616.65. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. That's really good, actually. Make sure your parentheses all look the same as mine. If you didn't, my guess is that you didn't put parentheses here correctly or here correctly. One of these, or can you plug in this way? Yes, Ms. McGee, we're good. No, Ms. McGee, do another one. Do another one? Okay. Jerome took his $500 because he said that was crappy. And he went down the road to another bank. Jerome, what interest rate did they offer you? 1.3%. And that's okay. How, and how often did they compound? Daily. How much does Jerome have in his account after the same six years? Yeah, do this one yourself. All right, several of you have finished, so let's do it together. 500. Shh, shh, shh. Guys, 1 plus 0.013 over. How many times is it compounded per year? Raised to the 365 times 6. <laughs> 1 plus 0 0.01, what was it? Ah, divided by 365. Close that again. Raise it to 365 times 6. 540.56. Wow. That interest rate makes the interest rate makes more difference than the number of times compounded makes. I'm just keeping my five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so ten thousand would be five hundred dollars. Okay. Um now some banks, there's one other formula I need to show you. <laughs> so that's the number of times compounded per year. Sometimes they will do, and actually more times than not, they do what we call compound continuously. Which means for that n, if you could make, if you could plug infinity in for that n, if it was compounded infinite number of times per year, this is what you would get. And and it may did I well. Okay, let me just give you the equation. Why we use different variables here, I don't know. But we use what was called PERT. Okay. P is your initial amount. It's the same thing as your A. Rate is the same. Remember, it needs to be as a decimal. And T is the same. It's my time. Okay. And the deal is, if you took that equation, that 1 plus r over n to the n times t, if you put infinity in there, it approaches this value of e. Remember I gave you a formal definition for e that was like 1 plus 1 over x to the x. Do you remember that? No, you don't, because I told you you didn't have to remember that. That's fine. Um, it approaches e, so that's why, that's where this formula comes from. Okay? So let's take that same $500. Let's take that same 1.3% PZ interest rate 
And it should be fairly close to that 540 when I do it because it was already compounded every day, right? This time we're going to compound it continuously after six years. This you're looking for the word continuously to use PERT. So I have 500 E. What's my R? 0 0.013. And my years? Six. The six. It should be. What'd you get? 540. It should be very, very close. 500 E to the 0.013 times. <coughs> Look how close. I mean, we're off like fractions of a cent. That's right. Easy enough. Jerome, who thinks that it's not enough money for what he, what, tell me this, Jerome. What amount after six years would you be happy with acquiring? What would be worth it for you to let your money sit there for six years? No, let's be realistic here. Seven hundred dollars. Okay. Okay. Well, it's free when when would your bank account reach seven hundred and eighteen dollars? Same five years. I mean, not not five years. I'm sorry. Same five hundred dollars that you invest. Same six years. Nope, not six. Not six years. We want to know how many years. Same five hundred dollars. Same one point three percent interest rate. How long would it take you? Let's say. Let's say compounded continuously. How long would it take you to reach seven hundred and eighteen dollars? Okay, seven. So this time, what we're going to do is we're going to set it equal, and we're going to have to solve for one of those variables. And this is where our logs are going to come in. So this time, I want to know if I start with five hundred and I do one plus that rate. Divided by, oh no, I lied. Boy, I'm flubbing this up every which way. Why was that wrong? That was the other formula. What formula should I be using? The P one, right? I should be using PERT because it's continuously. So it's $500. E, the rate is 0 .013, and the time is what I'm trying to find. I want to know what do I have to plug in for T in order to make this equal? How can you solve this? This is an exponential equation. What do you do first? Before I change the form, what's my first step? You need what? Divide by 500. That's exactly right. You have to isolate the exponential piece. You're going to be surprised by this number. It's going to be really big. All right, so I've got E to the 0.013T equals 1. Point what? Now, how do I solve this? Once the exponential term is isolated, what do you do? Change the form. In logarithmic form, what does this look like? ln, and I use natural log because the base is e. If you did log base e, that's not wrong. So natural log of what? 1.436 equals what? Logs always equal exponents, so 0.013 t. Can we solve that? Yeah. Sure. What's the natural log of 1.436? Let's find out. Anybody? What is it? How do you solve it for T? Yeah. How do you solve that for T? Divide by... 
0.013. So what do you get when you divide by 0 0.013? 27. Jerome, what does that mean? It's going to take you over 27 years to get your 500 up to 715. <laughs>